I don't think, you know, like I said, meat has been meat for two million years as far as humans go, or, more, or even arguably longer. And so I think that if we compare that to other foods that we eat now, we look at even some of the hybridized fruit that we have, it resembles nothing like what it would have been even 10,000 years ago, or even 2,000. Most vegetables today, I mean, broccoli, hell, wasn't even introduced in the United States till 1920. And, and you know, this is stuff where people think you, we've been eating it for millennia, and we haven't. And so, but clearly we've been eating, unless those caves in Lascaux and all these other fossil records are, are, were graffiti, which I don't think they were. I mean, those, in my view, I mean, I think that was a menu. I mean, I think that's yeah, what that was. That was a restaurant with a menu on there. That's a great point. I think the animals that we're eating today are much more similar to the animals we would have eaten than the plants we're eating today. Sure, absolutely. There's this idea, you know, you walk down the grocery store aisle, and I think people are, we misunderstand the abundance of edible plant foods in our environment based on what we see in the grocery store. Most of what we see is hybridized. Most of what we see is genetically engineered or has been bred in a certain way to be bigger and sweeter in terms of fruits or more edible. So many of the foods we eat now, are, like Sean is saying, were never available to us even 50, 75,000 years ago as humans. You couldn't just walk in the forest and just grab a leaf or grab a fruit. There, nothing was available. I mean, occasional tubers and seasonal small fruits, which were nothing like what we see today. So plants are very different than they used to be. Well, I think that's a very important point to talk about even optimal foraging theory. Like we've studied this and we know that hunter-gathered tribes didn't go for these leafy greens because they didn't have any calories in them barely. So there was no point to get them. These, they went for animals, they went for honey. I mean, these are source of calories and tubers. So a lot of people don't recognize the fact that these leafy greens have not been around for that long. And many of the roots, you know, many of the roots are toxic. Some of them are edible. Um, yeah, the plants, this fruit is very seasonal depending on the type of the climate and the latitude that you're at. And fruit, it didn't look like we have now anymore. Many of the things we eat were frankly toxic in the past. Well, Potatoes, I mean, almonds, these are all remnants of toxic foods. I mean, if we want to account for the facts that humans have colonized every inch of the earth, basically. I mean, and we started, you know, arguably in Africa and, you know, Eastern Africa. To make it from one part to the other, the only consistent food that would have been available is some sort of animal. I mean, you can't, if we're going to say we must eat X type of plant, you better show that it exists in all latitudes, in all climates, and all throughout the year. Otherwise, you can't make that claim. And what you can say is, if there's an animal there, humans will exploit that. And I mean, you know, to my point that we are the only species that has eaten whales and cows and lions and sheep and, you know, flies and birds. I mean, there's no other animal that can do that. And so we are the ultimate uh, predator. I mean, that's just who we are as a species. I mean, we need to accept that and embrace that. And meat is a huge part of what we are and what made us who we are. Well, if humans had the requirements for eating these leafy green type things, then how do we even exist? because like you said, they weren't available in so many parts of the world.